Hi, I'm Paul Salmon. I'm a psychic medium. Now, today's guest is someone you may have seen before. Her name is Maureen Dutton, author and director of Felix Stowe TV. Hello, Maureen. Hello. I think we've met before, don't you? I think we have a couple of times. I time. think you might have seen us before. Maureen, you interviewed me, didn't you, a few times, and I... a jolly good, you know, you're a good presenter. Oh, so had you had training before? No, never, never at all, really? not at all. Well, but you're, you're very easy to. Um, I am. I mean, you, you can say anything to me, but <laughs> <laughs> within reason. <laughs> now, let's talk about your books because it's your books that fascinate me. Oh. Now, okay. of course, we chat here anyway at Felix Stowe TV, and I read one of your books, *The Devil's Tears*. Um, now, I can, I can be quite detached, so I'm not sucking up to you. Yeah. But I loved it. I was enthralled. Really? Book. Yeah, oh, the characters. Wow. Give us a quick synopsis about the, um, the book itself. Well, The Devil's Tears is about um, Michelangelo. He is the son, and known as Angel. He got the nickname Angel. And he's the son of a prostitute. <laughs> yes. Say it as it is, boy. <laughs> as it is. Yeah, well, it is. Uh, and uh, living in Chicago. And you know, he had to be very wily and clever to try and make money. He, he would steal and mm. con people, and he was doing very nicely. And as he grew up, he grew up in the uh, Prohibition times. So although he wasn't a gangster, he was on the periphery of it all. Mm. And he led his life, and then he died. He was killed, he was shot. and. He'd also met the love of his life, Clemmy Desiree, mm. and she, oh, she's I, she's stunning. Mm. I love Clemmy. I'd love to be Clemmy, and um, she was killed as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was a gangster time. You know, they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, and this is where more of the supernatural comes in, really, because she went on to her new life as she should, but he was taken by surprise and went into what I call no man's land. Mm. And the angels, or the guardians as I call them, pulled him out of no man's land and virtually said he had to get on and help Clemmy in her new role and in her new life. Well, he's still angel from Chicago, mm. you know, bad-mouthed, uh, a bit underhanded, Lovely lad, actually. I really like him. But he's got all these traits and he's being asked to be an angel to go to her new life in London um, where she's been brought up in a very precise and correct way and uh, she's suddenly confronted by this angel. So mm. it's the story of how he helps her and how the guardians help him as well, because this is all a test for him mm. as well. But I mean, the, I was hooked on the story, but what also fascinates me is the spirituality in your book. Right. Because you mentioned angels, mm. guardian angels, reincarnation. So where did your, this spirituality come from? I've read a lot of books. Yeah. I have a great belief. I've seen various mediums over the years, and I, I have a real feeling for it mm. and and, I, and I've developed you know yeah. ideas of my own right or wrong I really do believe that everybody has a guardian um, has a, um, a soulmate mm. through every life I do think we go through lots of lives mm. a lot of that comes from Buddhism as well I, I like Buddhism because I know you don't class yourself as being psychic or medium or clairvoyant or anything like this no I don't but you do have this innate effective going on inside you, you know, this awareness, oh. and, it, and it does come out in your writings. Oh, right. So yeah. would, would you say your writing is inspired as well from somewhere? I absolutely do. I, 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 my belief is that all of my books are up there in the ether mm. and that I plucked them down and that if I hadn't taken them, somebody else would have. They were there ready for me. Mm. I think I was meant to, to write them. I and I feel I'm helped. Well, I, I believe yeah. you are, because your writing, it, it just flows, you know. Mm. But I want to move on to The Singing Detective, ah. which <laughs> I must admit I haven't read yet. Yeah. It... But I believe it involves murder, intrigue. And another thing you write about, 
sex. Because <laughs> so, I'm, I'm at home reading your book after yeah. I met you. Yeah. I thought, I don't believe this. This can't be the same lady I've just met, you know. <laughs> and, and it is. But where did the characters come from? How do you come up with names in the first place? They are inspired. I mean, my main characters are born and formed before I start writing. Mm. I know who they are. I know how they were brought up. I've built them. I've made them. And then when I push them out into the story, into mm. the novel, they do what they should do because that's their character. But I, I build them and the thoughts just come. I really think I'm inspired. I think you do, because if it was me, I'd be thinking, right, what can I call this character? And I'd be all day just picking a name. Oh. But with you, it's just it's there. manifest. Yes. No, they, they are just there. I really, I do sometimes think that I sit down, and I don't have a story. I sit down at my computer, mm. and it comes, and I write. With grief. And that's how it works. Which one of your books were in the top two? In, in the, was it? Oh, I mustn't advertise, <laughs> but it became quite high in the charts, didn't it? In yes, it did very well. well-known um, shop, <laughs> in the supermarket. Yeah. Or whatever. Um, the Singing Detective Singing did Detective. really, really well yeah. um, because it's different. Mm. Um, I was looking to write a series because I started with short stories and they weren't long enough for me, mm. so I wrote a novel. I wrote two novels. That's not enough for me. Mm. I need to expand the character, so now I'm writing a series. Okay, so how long does each book take to write? Well, most of the books I've been working at the same time as writing them, so uh -huh. they can take me six months to a year. But okay. once I sit down and type, mm. I'm just away. I'm a touch typist, I'm very quick, uh -huh. and it just flows. It's amazing. It's a, it's a wonderful experience. Right. But the singing detective is the book jacket's turned up in the most odd places, hasn't it? Yeah. Because there's a boxer called Kevin Mitchell, I believe. Yes, yes. And the the jacket of your book turned up on his shorts. Well I always and, say my book is on the back of a boxer's bum. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're mm, shorts, I would say. I'm sorry. I just thought it was a poetic. <laughs> It is, because when I first heard this, I heard you mention it once, I thought well, he had it tattooed on his backside, but, <laughs> but I believe it's his mother was so enthralled with the book. Yes, yes, she loved it, she really did, she's one of my real fans. Yeah, that's a bit yeah. advertising for you, isn't it? Yes. But I do think, you know, you, you, you followed up The Singing Detective, I think The Devil's Tears needs a follow-up, because I think Michelangelo's his own character, Yes. which of course he is. Yes. And it should progress on to further books. And With Clemmy? I, I think so. I think the different, two different. of them have to be together. Because if you can go from Michelangelo in Chicago 1920s mm. to Newbury Park in the 60s, <laughs> you can go anywhere. <laughs> There's no stopping you. Well, isn't there mention of a movie being made from The Singing Detective? Well, there is. Um, I, I had uh, various directors, uh, um, a, a, corporate, a team of um, directors and a backer, mm. and they were going to make a film of The Singing Detective. Right. And then that seemed to get put to one side. Mm. And now I've got another director who's very interested in doing it. Mm -hmm. So you never know your luck. Because um, it is different. It's about a Sikh detective. Mm. He's... Um, what did that? What did my publicist say? A Sikh by birth, but an East Ender by choice, yeah. and he's very East End. Mm. And um, I thought an unusual character. I'm just wondering that you've met so many people in your <laughs> short lifetime. Oh, you've, you've met, thank you. But I'm wondering, has your work influenced your writing? Because it's full of different characters, and in your working life, I believe you've. You're fascinated by people anyway. I, I am. And I, I, I even going to quote you, one of your quotes is, um, you've met some sad, mad, and is it terribly bad? Seriously, Seriously bad. bad people. I have, I have. No. I met, I met um, what I considered a mass murderer. Really? Yeah. That I, must be the seriously bad side of things. Yes, yeah, that's <laughs> really uh, just amazing because of all the different voluntary jobs I've done. Mm. And um, this was many years, do you want me to tell you? Yes, go yeah. on. 
that this was many, many years ago when I was a Samaritan and a chap rang up and it was at the time when AIDS had just HIV positive. Nobody knew, mm. there was no cure for it, nobody quite knew how you got it. If you remember, you didn't even want to touch no. somebody or you were, you were frightened to thinking you could catch it. Mm. Nobody knew what was happening, but they did know that it could be passed between people. And this guy rang up and it was really sad and um, he was gay mm. and he was just found out he was HIV positive. And it was a very sad call and we chatted for a while and um, just before he went, he said to me, and I won't use the exact words he used, mm. but um, he said, well, he said, um, before the symptoms really show, he said, I'm going to go off and have every man I can get hold of because once I'm found out, you know, mm. that will be the end of it. Mm. And he put the phone down, and I've just never forgotten that. Because no. to my mind, he could have infected God yeah. knows how many yeah. people. That was really chilling. Yeah. But you've, you've worked with youth offending teams, you've yeah. worked with Lions Charity, yeah. and like you said, seriously bad people. Yeah. And um, the Metropolitan Police as well. Yes, I worked for the Crown Prosecution Service right. and uh, I became a, w um, a charging centre manager um, and then I became a witness care officer and I worked very much in police stations with the police and I loved it. Yeah. I... So, so how can that not have helped you in your books? It must do, must Oh it? my goodness, writing. yes. Um, the characters in my books, mm. some of the stories, all obviously... Um, not quite as they were, mm. and maybe a little bit of poetic license, but so much happened, and mm. so many characters, and I love the police, and I wanted to big it up for the police as mm. well, because they have a really tough time out there. Have you still got a connection to any police officers, or that you can do research for your books? Or oh yes, no, yeah. I, I totally have. I mean, I've nearly finished the third in the series of The Singing Detective, yeah. And uh, I, I need to get that done because the fourth book's beckoning me. Oh, you've got me. a fourth one on its Oh, one. good grief, yes, and it's going to be a doozy. I, I'm, I'm getting a bit worried about myself. Every book yeah. gets more violent. Um, but I do like a creative murder. <laughs> now, that's what surprised me. Well, I'm, I'm at home reading your book thinking, <laughs> I met this lovely, respectable lady, then I'm reading all sorts of things. <laughs> and, and I can, but you don't know what goes on inside people, do you? Well, it's not me. You've no, it's to, not you. Of course it's, it's not it's, you. It's my characters. I yeah. mean, you know, every character has its own... It's, it's yeah. a person. It's yeah. formed. I've, I've got a person that had the certain lifestyle yeah. and they've made certain choices mm. and they're not my choices necessarily. But, you, you know, they go with it. Um, but I must admit, I got involved so much with your Devil's Tears um. that... Well, I think you said they died anyway, the, the people you're writing mm. about. I actually allowed, I went, oh! I know everybody gets really <laughs> shocked. I, thought, you I shouldn't have this. told them that, should no, I? No, but a bit of a spoiler. <laughs> but, um, well, it, it was a real shock. I've had so many people get, you know, get quite cross with me. Yeah. Then they realise it goes on. Oh well, yeah, because yeah. of reincarnation. So you yeah. can do, and, and I know there must be a follow-up to that after you've done The Singing Detectives, there's got to be. But I think it would make a great television drama rather than a film. Yes, I think you're right, yeah. Uh, I can see that happening. I think most of my books will be better on the television, to be quite honest. Mm. But, yeah, I was going to ask, yeah, but we haven't mentioned other books, like Silent Night. Ah. What's that about? Oh, it's a very dark thriller. Is it another dark one? <laughs> another dark one. Well, do you know, this is based very loosely on somebody I worked for. Mm. Now, this guy was really good-looking, he, he um, earned a lot of money, he went all over the world, he had a wife and a beautiful house uh, in Norfolk, mm -hmm. and he still wasn't satisfied. He wanted more, he was, uh, there were various things he was doing, and I just knew that if something came up that wasn't strictly legal, he'd go for it. Mm. And my character in the book is, is a He's a bit like that, mm. and the book starts off with him tied up in a dark, dank cellar, mm. waiting for them to come back and either torture him or mm. kill him. Mm. 
So Silent Night is the night where he goes back over his life to find out how the heck he got into this position. Mm. And of course the ending is still um, the ending. Yeah, don't mention the ending. <laughs> I'm not mentioning the ending at but all. Haven't you written magazine articles as well? Uh, I've, over the years. I have, yes I have, because uh, I did a lot in America. Um, mm. From England, mm. but I had articles written in America, um, and I've I've been on American uh, radio oh, shows yeah. as well. Yeah. Yes, they love the English accent, you know, and they were they were really quite interested uh, yeah. in in my books. I'm sure they are. And I I I I really enjoyed that. You should be a household name, Maureen. By oh, now. You thank, be, you. thank you. But let's move on a bit because you now, like I mentioned at the beginning, you work for Felix Howard TV. Yes. What is your role? I know what your role is, <laughs> but for those who don't know quite. Well, it was really um, that I was made a director, which was really nice, mm -hmm. and I was brought on board to build a new team. Um, and just because the television has been around for a while, but it, it just needed to change direction a bit, and just to add a few bits and pieces, we're all volunteers, and I think it's going really well. We're streaming now, we're mm -hmm. streaming you know, a variety of programmes every week, they're changing every week. We've got our video side, yeah. and I mean your shows are lovely, I love Thank your you shows. <laughs> and we just want a variety of different shows, all to do with Felixstowe and what's happening in Felixstowe and surrounding areas. And yeah. there's so much going on, this is a fabulous town. I was going to say, what do you see for the future, though, do you like to see Felixstowe TV going? But like you say, there's so much history to be involved in, yeah. different characters as well. Yes. Maybe with their own shows and stuff. Yeah, well, I'd like more shows. I'd yeah. like more specific shows like yours. Yeah. Um, and we've got our wedding singer, and I'd like art shows, and quirky bits and pieces, mm. you know, brought in. Something that, you know, you turn on Felix Stowe Television, if you're on the internet, you can pick us up. They pick us up in Australia. Yeah. We have people in Australia watching us yeah. as well. And, and and really make it something worth watching. I, I think we're doing really well. We've got a fabulous team mm. filming us now. Yeah. Uh, and enthusiastic. Always looking for more though. Always mm. so need some more volunteers. Right, so maybe if anyone's out there watching this. Oh yes please. Maybe you have please. an idea come along to feel it's time. Yeah. See more in. But um, I mean, the pleasure of, uh, of working here is I get to watch your shows. You, do, you, you get to be in it. <laughs> and I get to be in it, hey. Yeah, how am I doing? <laughs> you're, doing, you're, doing you're, you're not bad yourself. Yeah. You're a good presenter. But I mean, you, you, you managed to interview me four times. Yes. And I thought, oh, you've had training for this, because so, you're like, natural and... Oh, but it's like your books, you know, how you mix with people is how you channel. Um, I mean, like, I work in front of audiences as a... As you know, it's a medium. Yeah. And it seems like if I mix it in my private life with, with certain people, yes. I can channel that sort of person to the person in the audience. Oh. So what I'm getting at is if you work with youth offending teams, the police, mm. all types. Yeah, and I meant it as well. Seriously so. bad people. Yes. Then whoever's helping you is using your brain pattern in your work. So it can flow a lot easier. Oh, so I do feel that. Do you feel that? I feel then, that, that my books. I really feel I'm just a vehicle. That um, you yes, know, but without, but you, you've books. got to have your talent. You've got to have your earthly talent as well for them to work on. Oh. Are we confusing everyone at the moment? No, no you're with not. us, aren't you? Right. So <laughs> okay, you, you've got your th three books. Have you got anything in your head coming up for maybe next year? A different type of book. Well, I'm quite into my um, series, mm. and I've got another book for that. But I do take on board what you're saying about The Devil's Tears, because you're not the only one that said it. Um, others have really said to me they would love another book. Well, I've seen reviews on Amazon and newspapers. That, mm. Not just me, but other people have said, oh, I can't put this down. And, yes. And it, it's an easy read. Yes, thank but you. But at the same time, it's a complex plot. Yes. Much like I imagine the singing detectives are. Yes. I, I, I am so fond of The Devil's Tears. I just love the characters because they're my first. Mm. They're my babies. You know, you form them and you have to push it out into the world and, and hope others will 
will will yeah. love the book as well. So, do you remember the the point that you began to write it? The actual inspiration, or how did you get to write it? Oh yes, that was fascinating because I'd seen the medium, and I do like you know I'd seen a couple of mediums over my life, mm. and this particular one said to me, "You're going to be a writer." And she said to me, you're going to be a successful writer. Yeah. And it's like, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah. I'd written short stories and I'd dabbled and done bits, but I hadn't ever really mm. written a novel mm. or, or thought about a novel. They're huge things to do, you know. Mm. And they're quite scary. You think, I couldn't write all those words. And um, anyway, I went away and I had a particular job at the time uh, that was really boring and I hadn't got much work so I remember what she said and I thought let's have a little think here and I wanted something with a I really felt that I wanted something with a with a spiritual meaning to yeah. it I didn't want it to be all hearts and flowers I wanted something that had a bit of substance mm. to it and I thought what I was going to write would be a short story but it grew and it grew and it developed and my character got who he is yeah. and I just loved him and he was born. So when you begin a book, do you foresee the ending anyway or do you just carry on and see how? Oh, do you know what's so fascinating? I have to tell you this. I thought I did. Yeah. I thought I knew the start, the middle and the end because at school that's what they tell mm. you. Know your beginning, your middle and your end and work towards it. Well, I built this character and he'd got his own little ways mm. and I'm writing away and I wanted him to go in a certain direction. But as I'm typing, I'm going off in the other direction. Yeah. And what I often do is I, I'll just write and write and write and I'll stop and then I'll reread what I've done just to see if it makes sense because I'm just go off mm. with it. And when I reread it, I thought, well, yes, this, this, this angel, he would do that. He wouldn't do what I wanted him to do. Right, so he's forming his own character. He's, he just took off. Yeah. So when I realised that, what you do is you build your character, you yeah. put them in your the situation, and you just let them take you because mm. he knows what to do. He knows where so he's going. So that's a true character, isn't it? Yes. That it's a life of their own. Yes. And you're yes. just the... Uh, I'm just the, the vehicle. The vehicle. Yeah, and, and, and do you know what? I type fast because I want to know what he's going to I do. Would, I think you are being inspired from higher beings. I know. think I am, actually. Before we go, Maureen, I don't know where you find the time anyway. Yeah. With Felix Tower TV and your books. <laughs> but have you got any hobbies or other interests? Um, or have uh, you got time? I haven't. I mean, I love gardening. I absolutely love being out. I, I love nature, you know, mm. seeing things grow and, and growing things. I just love all that. It's very calming. Mm. And I love swimming. Oh, do you? Yeah, I love water. Do you pop in, in the sea, Felix, though? I have. No, <laughs> I have. Yes, I have. And it's really nice. Yeah, it's lovely. But I'm more, uh, um, I used to swim for a club when I was younger, uh -huh. so I'm a very much an up and downer, uh, you know. Because you're like, well, I was going to say you're like me, you're an Essex girl, but I'm not a girl. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, but I'm an Essex, Essex girl and proud of it. We're nice people in Essex. Yes, but we love Suffolk as well. Well, I'm, now I'm in Suffolk, I'm not moving. I love it here. Yeah. I do. I, this is Essex 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Maureen, thanks for being my guest today. Oh, it's been fascinating. You. Oh, thank you very and, much. I uh, hope you enjoyed lovely. finding out about Maureen here at Felix Toe <laughs> TV. Yeah. And we'll say goodbye and see you next time. Thank you.